rocks itself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice How great to disentangle myself just about from the bass guitar. Um, a warm welcome to this uh, morning communion service. It's great to welcome you, and um, if you're not worshipped with us before, a quick rundown, please wear your masks, thank you, unless you're exempt. Um, please feel free to use hand sanitizer wherever you need it. Um, please uh, don't sing, and please remain seated for the service. You can snap your fingers, you can uh, you, you can clap your hands, you can stamp your feet, don't dance, okay? We're not allowed to dance in the government rules. Um, but um, you can mumble behind your masks, that's the best we can offer, unfortunately, at the moment. Uh, we don't pass around a collection plate. If you want to make an offering, there's a bucket at the back, and you're welcome to stick your offering into that bucket. Uh, and Robert will give you some information on Holy Communion when we get to it. I think that's about it, um, apart from to say that uh, Robert and Joseph and I, are, no, Iris is leading our service this morning. So Iris, it's all yours, okay? <coughs> Good morning family, family here, family online. Coming together as God's family in this place, free to worship. Let's take a moment to be quiet before we start. I want to use the words of a chorus that I love when I was in Sunday school, so it's a very old chorus, to help us focus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory 
and grace. So as we come to you this morning, for <coughs> Lord, we come to us that we might see more of your glory, that we might learn more of your grace, that wonderful love which surrounds us. Lord, help us to come with hearts that are open and minds that are open to hear your word and wills that are ready, Lord, to do as you say. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. Help us as we worship you today, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to hand over to Dave and Joseph to lead us in worship. And I have to confess, I chose today's songs because Richard is not around today. He's flying to Belfast to record a, a mastermind. We have a very talented worship team here, you know. Um, but um, our theme today is uh, worship together, and it's worship in practice. And so our opening songs, uh, number two, three, and four, are all about worshiping God. Um, Psalm 150 is the inspiration for song number two, Praise Him on the Trumpet, and for song number four, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, which is unashamedly a rip-off of Dave Brubeck's Take 5, okay? Um, but it's based on Psalm 150 as well. Um, so these songs invite us to praise God, to celebrate, and to sing of the Lord's goodness as all nations. That's you lot, okay? There are quite a lot of nations represented here this morning. Um, Joseph and I are going to do a sort of double act on this, but uh, the most important thing, above all else, is that they are songs of praise. So uh, when we get to loud cymbals, we'll have some loud cymbals on the drums, but you might just want to clap your hands as well and pretend to be a loud cymbal, okay? Um, you can stamp your feet as I say, you can snap your fingers. If you're watching online, then you can sing as loud as you like. Just annoy the neighbours. Um, and you'll find our service order if you follow the links from the church website. So, um, band, take it away with praising on the trumpet. Thank you. 
sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come there on you nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, tell his all praise and thanks to all. Sing of the Lord's goodness. justice, to sing to you, to worship you, to praise you, to draw close to you, to bless you, to give you the honour you deserve. Lord, as all nations together gathered in this place, as so many different and diverse people, we pray that our unity may be in worshipping Jesus, the risen Lord, the Lord who sets us free. We ask this, Lord, in his name. Amen. And after that rather manic praise session, we're back to Iris. And we come to prayer. So if you'd like to take your yellow sheets at home, I hope you've found it on the website. And let's together say the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a sentence from Scripture from Philippians. It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more, so that you may approve what is excellent and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Because so often we're not pure and we're not blameless, we need to say sorry. So we're going to say the confession together. Lord Jesus, we confess the wrongs of the past week, year, lifetime. We ask you to give us your forgiveness 
a new start and a new life. Help us to know you as Saviour, to follow you as Lord, and to receive your love. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in our vocation and ministry we may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Carol, I think, can come and send the younger ones out. Yep, it's time for <coughs> another uh, episode of our DVD. Um, and Peggy is going to come and help me today. And so um, there are some toys for the very young children in the cafe. <coughs> and then the Sunday Club children, if you make your way to the Christchurch room, socially distanced, and then... Um, YPF, you have a choice. You can either come and watch the DVD or stay in church here. It's up to you. Uh, so Peggy um, will come and help me, and uh, Gigi's coming as well, and we'll see you a bit later. And I've just realised I haven't put any hand sanitizer in the room, so I'll nick this one here, Dave, and bring it back later, okay? Okay. St. John's, oh good afternoon St. John's, <laughs> keep saying morning. Um, our reading this morning is from the, this afternoon is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 150. Okay, thank you. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. 
Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and the lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Revelations 5, 9 to 11 and 9 to 13. The four living creatures and the 24 elders sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands, ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power and forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. I think my mic is a bit low, so I might want to turn it down a little bit there. Our gospel is from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, beginning to read in verse 14. Hear the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> well, some of you will know that our teaching at the moment is all about worship. And I've called it worship together because I think the together bit is important. Today is worship in practice, three different examples of worship from the Bible, and they are very different. Psalm 150 is an offering of praise to God. If you look at it, it's, uh, it involves quite a lot of different people, and actually it must have taken a bit of effort to get this together. You may or may not know that the band and the choir usually practice for a half an hour, sometimes an hour, before the service, so that we're all literally singing from the same hymn sheet, that's the aim at least. Um, and it takes a bit of organisation to get this amazing act of worship together. What we have in Psalm 150 as well is a wonderful experience of different elements coming together. You've got all sorts of different instruments, you've got people breathing, you've even got people dancing. Um, don't dance together because the government doesn't allow it unfortunately. Now I think what we've got here is two things. We've got a very 
uh, avert giving of praise and offering of praise to God. This is all about saying, God, you're wonderful. But you're also, if you've ever been part of a large group singing, you know it's a very cleansing, a very inspiring experience. God's Holy Spirit comes in and washes through us and helps us to grow in faith. In Luke 22, you've got a very different sort of worship. The context of this act of worship is the Jewish Passover meal. Now, the Jewish Passover meal was the highlight of the year for the Jewish people. It was a bit like um, our Easter Sunday and Christmas dinner all rolled into one, because there was very definitely a meal, but as part of the meal there were things to say. If you've ever been to a Passover reenactment, you'll know this. There's a, a ritual to it. There's a remembrance of God's love and God's rescue of his people from Egypt on the night of the Passover. And it's more than just a remembrance, it's a reenactment. It's almost bringing that, that event into the present and celebrating it. To all this, Jesus adds a new dimension. He doesn't just rescue us from slavery in Egypt. He rescues us from sin. He rescues us to a new life through his sacrifice, through his death on the cross, through his resurrection. Then he says, do this in remembrance of me. When I, when I show parties of kids around the church, I, we always end with uh, the communion table or the altar, something I say it's called. And I explain to them what happens with bread and wine. I say all the, all the grown-ups get a tiny piece of bread and a tiny drink of wine. Uh, and the kids get a special blessing. And I say, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. That's why we do it. And I usually add, it's probably the only commandment of his that we've ever fully kept, frankly. He also said, love one another. We're not so good at that, are we? But we are uh, at least good at remembering him in Holy Communion. So this act of worship is a quiet act of worship. We remember, we make present. More than that, we receive something from Jesus. We receive this bread, this wine. For us, it symbolizes the body and blood of Christ. We don't just look at it and take it home. We eat it, we drink it. It becomes part of us. You are what you eat, they say yes. You can tell I eat lots of the wrong things, too many chips. We are what we eat when we receive the body and blood of Christ, symbolized in this bread and this wine. Revelation chapter 5, yet a different sort of worship. This is a glimpse of what worship will be like in heaven, guys. Now when we get to heaven, who will be the central figure? It will be God himself, right? and Jesus, yes. And that's the picture here. There's God on the throne, there's Jesus, the Lamb, at his side, and there's all of heaven gathered around them, and they worship him. And of course, they're responding to God's amazing love. They're committing themselves to God's purposes. They're saying, yes, Lord, what you've done is wonderful, and yes, Lord, we commit ourselves to being your people. We commit ourselves to serving your purpose. Lovely picture of all these people bowing down. The elders, the living beings, the angels, all bowing down before the Lord. Now three very different sorts of worship. What have they all got in common? Well the first thing they've got in common is God central. And that's what marks Christian worship off from any other event. We're not just getting together for a singing song. East London Chorus do that on Tuesday nights. Um, at the moment they sing outside, they're not allowed to sing inside. But that's a sing song, that's not worship. There is a group apparently around London, several groups around London, uh, of atheists who meet to have a sing song and a bit of an inspirational talk, and they even have a quiet moment of reflection. And then they have coffee and biscuits afterwards, because that's what all churches do, don't they? Um, and they felt they were missing out, you see, by not coming to church. So they have all the experiences of church. And of course, there's no God at the centre. For Christians, God is central in our worship. He has to be, he must be. But it's not worship. Second thing all these different forms of worship have in common is that they have a content. We worship God, recognizing what he has done for us. We don't just say rah, 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 hooray, hooray, hooray. We recognize what God has done. I think worship at its best is an act of learning as well. Because as we worship, 
we learn what God has done. It's also an act of commitment, of course, we commit ourselves to being God's people, to responding to what he has done. But there's a content to our Christian worship. Third thing they have in common is that they are corporate. Now there's a place for quiet time, there's a place for quiet prayer. And actually during the week we provide a place for quiet prayer. We're open Monday to Saturday for people to come in and pray quietly and enjoy the silence. But all these forms of worship are together. Holy Communion, for instance, is a together thing. We consecrate all the bread and the wine on the one table. Jesus emphasizes that we share one bread, one cup, if only. We will one day. And we share as the body of Christ together. It's corporate. In Revelation, there's a common purpose with God very much at the center. They're together because they share this common purpose of praising God and glorifying Him for what He's done. Psalm 150, well, we've just sung a version of Psalm 150. Just listen. Praise Him on the trumpet and psaltery and harp. Praise Him on the timbrel and the dance. It's a bit better when you've got drums and guitar and keyboard. And it's better when you've got two voices, when you've got Joseph harmonizing as well. When you've got bass guitar stuck in there along the way. You see, that's a, a prime example of how great it is to worship together. And I think it's very important that we do take seriously this corporate nature of worship. We pray to God as individuals, and please do. But we also worship and pray and learn together. Because our Christian faith is a together faith. Jesus calls us to be brothers and sisters. So worship in practice. Worship unites us. It unites us together. And I think it unites us in God's purpose. As we meet, we're strengthened. We're encouraged. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. The, Hebrew, the church to which the writer of the Hebrews is writing was going through a tough time. And chapter 10, verse 24, 25, he says, Let us consider how we may spur one another onwards towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Worship is an encouragement and a strengthening for each one of us. Now, I think worship is vitally important. I would go as far as to say that you can get away with a boring sermon. You cannot get away with boring worship. Now that's a hard thing for the evangelical church to come to terms with. We know the word's important. But actually places like hill songs show us that worship is just as important as well. It's, as I said, that cleansing of God's spirit working in us as we worship. It's that inspiring of being part of this vast group singing God's praises, recognizing his wonder. And we have to learn far more to put word and worship together. When I came to be worshipped to be vicarious in John's a very long time ago, we had a, a prophecy that worship would be important. And thank God he's sent us musicians. Most recently he sent us Sam to play drums and Gigi to play keyboard and so on. Most of all, I think worship puts us in a right relationship. Because when we worship, we recognize the wonder of God. Worship puts us, sometimes with our hands in the air, sometimes on our knees, sometimes dancing, sometimes singing, sometimes sharing together. But above all, it puts us in a relationship where we say to God, Lord, you are great. And we want to be your people. We want to praise you as your people. We want to be part of your plan and your purpose. Worship together. Lots of different ways. God at the centre. And all of us united in his service. Thanks for listening. Uh, we're going to have some prayer together now. And James is going to lead us in prayer together. Let us pray.
Father Lord, we want to thank you again and again and again for this opportunity that we are alive and here today. It's your grace because you are the all-sufficient God. Father, we thank you for your mercies endure it forever. We thank you for without you we are nothing. We thank you because we have you to tap into. We draw strength from you. We draw, draw life from you. We get hope from you. We take our next steps based on your calling. Father, we thank you because without you we are finished. Lord, today we give you glory for the opportunity to hear your word again. And Father, we thank you because we know that in everything we have to say thank you, Father. Lord, we come to say if we regard iniquities in our heart, you will not hear us. Lord, we release anyone, anywhere that might have offended us in any way. We release them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We also pray, dear Lord, that they find space in their heart. Lord, nudge them so they release us as well in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we want to commit all members of St. John's to your hands, O oh Lord. In the years, the months, the weeks ahead, O oh Lord, we commit everything we have to do to your hands, O oh Lord. Even as we start this new week, Father, we pray that every change we expect in our life will come our way in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that we are expecting, Lord, that has been difficult in the past, Lord, make it easy and visible for us in this week and the coming weeks in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we want to pray concerning couples, O oh Lord, that... Lord, you said marriage is good. And you said if anyone wishes to be married, they can go ahead. Otherwise, they can stay single. Father, in as much as you have allowed couples to go ahead and be couples, Father, we pray that you be the center in every home. Especially at this time. At this particular time of the pandemic. Lord, we pray that as it comes to an end, there will be healing in hearts and homes in the name of Jesus. That as families will be able to lead the children to a point where they will no longer be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. None of us will bury our children in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we pray that we shall be hearing good news of successes on the day of celebration of our children, Father, we shall be present in the name of Jesus. No one will take our place in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we want to thank you this morning, this afternoon, because we also appreciate the fact that whilst we are here, there are many who would have loved to be here with you, but they are not. Father, we pray for Anjun. We pray for Minta. His mother, who is unwell. We pray for Margaret, who is unwell. We pray for Tom Neely's husband, that you strengthen these people as we name them. We pray for Bernadette, who is also unwell, and Marcia, receiving medical treatment. Kate, Will, who is unwell. Tina, Connie's aunt. Brian, June. Lord, we pray also for Ivy. Maria's mother, who is in hospital. We pray for all those who suffer from coronavirus. We pray for all those who are undergoing various treatments at this time. That the treatment will work for them in the name of Jesus. That you will put the right people on their path to oversee their care in the name of Jesus. That Father, you will turn their tests, their moments of tests, Test they bring through in months, in weeks, in years. Father, you will turn it to testimonies for them in the name of Jesus. That your children will rise up 
and testify to your goodness in the mighty name of Jesus. We say affliction shall not revisit and we claim it for each and every member of this church and those they relate with in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the people of India, Nepal, Vietnam, Uganda, and all other nations struggling with COVID. Father, take preeminence. Heal them. Father, make a way for them. Give them hope. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine. We pray for peace and an end to violence. We pray for an end to street violence and knife crime in London. Lord, we pray for Nigeria at this particular time because we know when there is storm, there is always a moment of peace. Father, we pray that you, you take charge of that nation. You take charge of that nation. Any leadership that is not relevant to its people, Father, let someone take their place in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus for Christians in Nigeria and across the world that are being martyred for their faith. Father, we pray for those they have left behind that, Lord, you will give them hope and the strength to carry on. Let there be light at the end of the tunnel in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for all the leaders of the church that you will bring them all together that they will only deliver your word in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we also want to give thanks for the progress of the work, work the way mission, and for God's provision for the teams as they walk and share the gospel. Lord, we pray for anybody here or somewhere else who has lost someone, Father, that you will comfort such families. Lord, as we depart from your sight today, we still want to thank you ahead of time concerning our vicar as he retires. Lord God, we pray that you continue to help us in the months ahead and give him strength as well, Father, even at this time. We thank you for using him and his wife, Carol, in this church. Lord, we pray that our future will be better as well in the name of Jesus. That by the time Dave looks back, he will have every cause to glorify God that what he, has, what he has planted has grown and continues to grow. Father, we thank you for this day. We worship you. We glorify you in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. And peace be with you, those who are watching at home. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you all. Our next hymn is hymn number six, Beautiful Lord, Wonderful Savior. This is also our offertory hymn. Um, as Dave announced earlier, we're not passing the bucket around, but if you wish to make an offering, there is a bucket at the back. Just ask the welcomers, they'll show you where it is. You can place your offering, and that will be brought forward um, at the end of the song. And those um, worshiping at home, um, you can come into the church at any time. So hymn number six, Beautiful Lord, Wonderful Savior. Oh, mm -hmm. 
the show. All of my days are held in my hand. Often to the perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all my life through your eyes. By your Holy Spirit, me to yourself. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hands. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. To you be glory and praise forever. 
Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and with this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessings and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We invite any communicant members of any Christian churches to come forward to receive communion. If you are coming forward, please um, come down the middle aisle in one queue only. Please, just the one queue when you get to the front. Nick and I will be here to serve you. And when you've had your, your wafer, please go back to your seats using the side aisles. Please, let's maintain social distancing as we come forward to receive communion. Um, for today, um, we, I will receive the, bre the, the wine on your behalf. We pray to the Lord that soon we will all be able to share in the wine together. So brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving. Yes, you want my 
Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I have noticed his bands and birthdays today, so let's do the bands first. Um, quite a lot of bands of marriage actually. I published the bands of marriage between Paul Allen Coates of this parish and Juliet Alice Jeffries, also of this parish, also between Thomas Hervey Course uh, Jens uh, of this parish, and Melissa Harriet Culver of this parish, also between Aaron Kester Minka Born Dick of this parish, and Rafina Laurel Grace Yard of this parish, also between Christopher Matthews of this parish, and Pooja Dutani of this parish. This is the first time of asking in every case, and if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not respectively marry each other, please declare it. Let's pray. Father, we pray for all these couples who are marrying each other. We pray that you'll bless them in their new married life, that you lead them in your service always. Amen. Okay, um, if you look at the blue sheet, that's our newsletter. One thing that's not on the blue sheet, yesterday, uh, I wasn't around, but apparently we had a, an amazingly good vocations day. Anyone at the vocations day yesterday? Anyone come along? I know Gigi was along the part there. Yeah, yeah, and Alice was there, yeah. Um, it was really good. 
Um, it's good to have the Archdeacon who recognised it really good. And it's really good to say that it was all Robert's hard work. So, round of applause, please. Okay, he had a team of people working with him, and I know how much hard work he put into this, okay? His idea, uh, his vision, his hard work. What an amazing associate picker we have, guys. So, uh, that's good. Right, um, next service today is 1830 Holy Communion. YPF Zoom is back tonight if you're watching YPF. Um, join us for Zoom because it's a football rest day today, so YPF Zoom will be at 6.55. Um, you can get a rundown on our Worship Together teaching series on the notices. That takes us through till July the 18th. Um, the birth of a new great-granddaughter last Monday. You look far too young to be a great-grandma, Shiva. Um, this week, church is open from Monday to Friday, 10 till 2, and we're open Saturday, 10 till 12, for people to come in and pray, possibly have a chat. Um, evening prayer will be at 6 p.m. on live stream on Facebook. If you um, want to join us, you're very welcome at Facebook, or you can pray where you are, you have the readings and the prayers for the week here. Um, what else do I need to say? Yes, Mission Giving Committee is meeting tomorrow. We've got about 11,000 or so to give away. That's 10% of our annual giving. And we're deciding where that goes tomorrow, so please pray for us. Healing Cafe is meeting on Tuesday, 11 o'clock in the cafe. Free tea, coffee, biscuits, etc. Tuesday Top Up on Facebook is doing Ephesians chapter 4 this week. I really enjoyed doing Ephesians with you guys. Hope you can join us. Um, and the Thursday Holy Communion is happy as normal, 12.14. Next Sunday, it's Holy Communion 10, 12, 6, 30. Um, and it's uh, Worship and Fellowship Together. And Robert is speaking at all three services next Sunday. And the women's group is meeting after the 12 o'clock service. They're meeting at 2 o'clock, either in person or on Zoom. And details for Zoom will be sent to women's group members. And they should be on the newsletter for next week, I hope. Um, Christchurch Three Mills is doing really well. If you want to drop, drop in, please email Dan first, because uh, he'd love to see you. But please do pray for what's happening there. And last but not least, last week we show you a map of the TFM Walkaway Mission. We've got a little graphic on the newsletter uh, this week, um, telling you where they've got to. You can see the West team have gone a little way in from St David's, and the East team are a little way in from Lowestoft. The aim is they meet in the middle in September. It's not a race. The whole aim is that they meet uh, people along the way. They pray, they talk, and they share the good news of Jesus together. So please pray for them. Right, okay, what have we got? Birthdays, lots of birthdays. Don't know if any of you guys are here, but some of you might be on live stream. So, uh, hope you're ready for this. We have a birthday card for Mayor. Ezio Fulikwe, who is free um, today. So happy birthday, Mayor. Happy birthday, a round of applause. Yeah. Birthday card for Logan Rico Rice, who is six on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Logan. A birthday card for Amey Paris Ramin, who is nine today. Happy birthday, Amey, if you're watching. I know she watches and brother watches. Happy birthday to Kyla, who is nine on Tuesday. Kyla, can we get your card? Happy birthday. Hey, yeah. Don't be shy, it's not like you. Congratulations, is there a party? There is, okay, good. Yeah, I hope it's a good one. Happy birthday to Dumi Raji, who is nine on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Dumi. Uh, happy birthday to Kenneth Onomado Jr., who is 14 today. Happy birthday, Kenneth. And happy birthday to Miles Onu, who is 18 on Monday. Uh, oh, Miles, happy birthday! Whoa. The baby of the family, eh? Yes, gosh, isn't that scary? Uh, I've got a few more, I've got lots more, actually. Um, happy birthday to Herbert Flint who is 19 on Thursday, and Herbert, sorry, no more cars till you're 90, okay? A round of applause anyway. <laughs> Happy birthday to Matthew James Sutton, who is 27 on Thursday. Give him a round of applause. 
I'm saying you don't look old enough to have a 27 year old son, and I don't look old enough to have baptized him, do I? Eh? <laughs> uh, so it, yes, I baptized him when he was a baby. I happened with him Chris Mudd in Mary uh, on Monday. Happy birthday to Shell Langston today. Happy birthday, Shell, if you're watching. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to all Red Skates today again. And um, I know this lady's watching. Sue, happy birthday for Thursday. Sue Defoe. Sue, if you're watching, happy birthday. I hope you're singing along with all our songs, okay? Um, any more birthdays? No, thank goodness for that. Right. Uh, if you've got a birthday this week, may God bless you richly. Okay, we're back to Robert. Oh. And our last um, hymn is hymn number... Well, it's the hymn after... Yeah, hymn number 10. <laughs> uh, crown him with many crowns. Hymn number 10, crown him with many crowns. Sing and worship him every day of your lives. Go out and be his people in our world. So may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.